Welcome to the Dashboard Effect podcast. I'm Brick Thompson, and today I have with me Landon Oaks, who is the Director of Solutions for Blue Margin. Um, his group basically does all of our hard work behind the scenes on data pipelines, setting up data lakes, that type of thing. Welcome, Landon. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. So I wanted to talk to you today about something we talked about earlier this week, which was a problem you were having with pulling data from NetSuite. Um, I was a little shocked to hear that because NetSuite is such a widely used ERP. Um, I know they have a, a mature and well-developed um, API, but you were having problems with it. What, what, what problems was it giving you? Yeah, definitely. So uh, in this particular case, uh, we decided to go for the REST API on NetSuite. Um, so we've we set up two two different instances. The first one, they didn't use NetSuite a ton, so the amount of data in there and tables that were being used was relatively small. This is the client that, that didn't have much data? Yes. Okay. Um, and in that instance, the, the REST API worked great. We didn't have any issues with it. Okay. So fast forward a couple months later, uh, we get this new client coming in. They're bigger, uh, and they have – it's their main system, and that's what it is. So tons of records. Tons of records okay. and tons of customization. Are uh, we talking like tens of millions of records or – Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, 60 or, million, I want to say, off the top of my head was the biggest one. Okay, um, a biggest table. Yeah. Uh, so there's hundreds of millions of records throughout. Across the system, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, but they also have tons of customizations on top of it too. Oh, so okay. I can't say if that had anything to do with it, but – what we found is uh, the smaller tables, smaller data sets worked totally fine, no issues. Um, once we got to some of these bigger ones, like the 60 million row, uh, there's one called like a transaction line and transaction accounting line objects. Uh, the API couldn't do it. Just choked so, on it. Yeah, it never returned us Never anything. returned anything? So That's we, we, play, we were playing around with it a lot. We were limiting it to one row, um, and that would take you know, 10 minutes or so to get us back a single row. So, oh, okay. Um, you try to ask for everything, nothing. Just choked. Nothing would come back. So you try to pass in date parameters, say, you know, only give me stuff that's been modified after yesterday. Um, and just couldn't do it. Wouldn't return anything. Okay. I don't know what it was, but just something what? on the back end, maybe just not not getting the data back. Okay, that's, that's surprising for me to hear. I asked you then what you did about it, and I was surprised in your answer. You said that they have an ODBC connector, mm -hmm. and you use that, and it worked great. I was surprised just because it just seems like an old technology. Yeah. Everybody's moved from ODBC to APIs. Um, tell, tell me about that. What, what was your experience there? Yeah, definitely. So it was a bit of a shock to us too. Um, so this uh, this ODBC connector, we what's interesting about it is NetSuite is in the cloud. It's a cloud-based right. tool. So typically, you don't need an ODBC for a cloud-based tool. Right, uh, you're connected to a server into a SQL database yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah, something hosted on prem uh, somewhere. So. Yeah. We just decided to try it because the client really needed this data. We couldn't get it to them. Um, so we installed the ODBC, configured it, sent a request for 10,000 rows from one of the big 60 million tables, um, and it came back in 10 seconds. Oh. Yeah, just night and day difference. Um, okay. So it was a shock. So at that point, we're like, well, what happens if we just open it up? And I want to say it was under 20 minutes to get 20 the minutes entire to get everything. data set. Yes. Not just that one table. No, for that one table. But, oh, okay. You know, um, compared to nothing, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a huge, huge improvement. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, so it was a shock, and it's it's still a little bit of a janky solution because when you think about it, um, you need to install this ODBC on a machine somewhere. We can't do it at Oracle because it's NetSuite. You know, that's right. security risks. Yeah. Um. So you have to really install that ODBC either on a virtual machine in the cloud or the other option would be on a computer or a server on your premise network, Yeah. which at that point it doesn't make sense because now you're pulling it down from the cloud then sending it right back up into right. the cloud to Azure for us. So, so you just do a VM in the cloud. Yeah, so we ended up creating a virtual machine in Azure uh, that, that will pull data from that ODBC. So it's a bit of a janky solution, but 
it was much better than that API. Okay. Did you try um, filtering for date ranges and things like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, handled it without a problem. It's That's been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So I guess the tip for anybody who's building a data pipeline for NetSuite, if you're having any trouble, if you have a big data set, try try the ODBC. I'm sure you guys looked at the documentation for the API and tried to mm -hmm. figure out what's going wrong. Is it maybe just not set up to do that well? Yeah, we uh, we kept hitting dead ends everywhere we went. Um, There's even a pagination error where you, the pagination is supposed to give you back a thousand rows each time. Um, after about three thousand, we noticed it started giving us back eight hundred, then six hundred, then eight hundred again. Uh, uh, so there's something weird going on up there. I don't know if they're working on it. Um, I will say we did submit a ticket with uh, NetSuite, but so far we haven't haven't heard much. Haven't back. heard anything back. And meanwhile, the ODBC connection's working great. Yeah, it does mm -hmm. have the extra expense of having to run a VM. Yep, yep. Um, I'm sure you can have some automations to turn that up and down for when you need it, just to to run your um, pull for the night or whatever. But mm -hmm. yeah, okay. But the VM's not not too bad actually. It's uh relatively cheap yeah. um, in terms of, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month. Right. Because the only job that VM has is to pull data and then send it back out. Send so. it right back to Microsoft. Exactly. One or, yeah. Yep. Okay. That's cool. All yeah. right. I appreciate you telling me about that. Hopefully uh, some of our viewers will, will get something out of that, especially the NetSuite yeah. Net users. But actually, maybe there's a more general application. Like, if you're really struggling with an API, see if they have an old ODBC connector sitting around yeah. and then it's surprising to me that it worked connecting into this cloud service <laughs> yeah. that they were still supporting that yeah. but if you can find that it does then you can run a vm connect to it there yeah Very absolutely cool. you know get creative with yeah. how you're going to pull data out of it you know there's not just one solution you know that's one one of the things we do we'll, we'll go with one if it's not working out we'll Try we'll one. start to scour for new things um you know as long as it's reliable and automated it's good all right. That's great. Well, thanks. I'll, actually, we're going to come back and record another episode here in a bit. So <laughs> talk to you in a couple minutes. Sounds good. All right, Thank see you. you.